Hi, good afternoon, good morning, good good day tomorrow. Cheryl, you're, you're in tomorrow already. How's it looking? Are we still, was everything still good tomorrow? It's beautiful, beautiful Yay. day. Something to look forward to. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lovely hey, day. We, we all have, we're all in a beautiful bright spaces and I love seeing all your faces today too. So good to see you all. You know, we have all done a lot of uh, travel showing, well, except Rose, you actually didn't travel to show. You showed like right in your studio. Uh, how do you prepare for that? <laughs> Honestly, in our building at 1000 Parker Street, which is um, a building full of studios, uh, I think there's 70 studios in there. So many are shared. It literally, like you would think, someone kicked the beehive for the two weeks before the culture crawl honestly like the place is quiet if you come during the day usually you don't really see a lot going on make people some people walking through the halls but the two weeks before the crawl it is like people running in and out of their spaces with dollies covered with crap because <laughs> we're turning our working spaces into a display environment and Anybody who makes anything knows that it's a messy business. <laughs> and so um, you don't want all of the lovely visitors who come during the um, uh, open studios tour to have to be stepping over your <laughs> drop cloths and, you know, brushing against wet paintings and, you know, having disasters happen. In my case, I have this huge ladder that like, lives right beside my entry door most of the time <laughs> so well you had to move the ladder too i had well yeah of course so uh yeah we have to move stuff so you'll see a lot of people before and after the open studios putting stuff on their dollies and taking them down into the storage area <laughs> and then going back and taking it up afterwards so there's a lot of tidying like just physical reorganizing and rejigging to make a nice flow for the visitors to be able to come in and out of your space without having to step over your easel and stuff like that. Right. So for me, it's um, kind of demanding because I have a, a person with a disability. So it takes a lot out of me and I usually need my son to help me. <laughs> That's a good idea. Just, even if you didn't have a disability, it would be a good idea. But yeah, it's yeah. it's just a busy time. But also, yeah. like everybody else, you have to um, promote your event. So a lot of the preparation is shooting images of your new pieces, and you know, sending them out as little test taste testers, and trying to get some interest in your own, you know, market audience and your own past collectors and people who've come through before and expressed an interest in your work. You want to send things out to them and say, hey, I got some new stuff. Why don't you come on by? This is when and where and how. And of course, this event, it's a uh, kind of run by um, an artist's cooperative. It's run by uh, the Eastside Art Society. So there's a lot of free media screening and um, uh, shows that are uh, in conjunction with the open studios. So we have to submit for open calls and you have to get everything ready and framed and hung and wired according to each different venues needs. Mm. Cause they're all different. Some want mm -hmm. D rings, some don't want D rings. It's all. Mm -hmm. So there's a, uh, there's a lot of prep. So it's about a good two months beforehand. I'd say even without pushing to finish new artworks, that you want to launch for that period, there's a lot of prep involved, more than people would realize. Oh, I, I would think so too, because if you're working on something experimental and then you've got people coming into your studio and it's like, I'm not ready to show any of this yet. And then what do you do with that, right? That's not the stuff you want to put in the basement. Yeah, well, I had to hide some stuff that was in progress because I wasn't ready for it to be seen by... Yep other eyes than my own. <laughs> yep, yep. Well, you work with acrylics mostly and, and uh, sun print and stuff, so you don't have to work with uh, mm. long drying times of, of, of your materials, right, Rose? Mm. 
Well, to be honest, I do mix media. So I still have my some of my pieces that are watercolor and oil based mm. in progress. And I have to be strategic about when I'm going to add anything if I know I'm going to have to pack it up and move it and get it out of the way. And plus, uh, a lot of people are sensitive to the smell of oil paint and um, everything involved in it. So I try to be really conscientious about exposing people to those kind of smells. So much preparation. I, I don't think people would have any idea that one that working from your your own studio under circumstances like that would would require that much um, preparation, right? It's like, well, you're already working there. Wouldn't that be easy? And and then also, wow, that thought just left my head. I, I really had a thought though. Well, there, a lot of it is liability issues because when you're working in your own space, mm -hmm. you have to be conscientious about like open chemistry, off gassing, mm. things mm. on the floor, anything anyone can trip on, uh, any oh. anything that's out. Even if right. you have your palette knives out and you have people coming in and out, you have to be careful. They might have children with them. And so you really have to be aware when you're inviting people into your own studio space about those kind of issues, because as a small business owner, you are liable mm. for anybody getting injured in your space. Oh boy, that's a whole other layer that the average person wouldn't even consider. And it did remind me, but thank you for saying what you said, one, informationally, and two, because how physical, like really physical it is to, to, do, to do this stuff and to, to prepare your space for that, how, yeah. much, how much up and down and moving the stuff. And, uh, you know, we, we know that like, Denise is going to tell us about her amazing experiences going to you know Art Basel and 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 being a world traveler and um and and Cheryl Gallery spaces too. But if it's your own space, it's like you know where everything is. And some places we just let them float. You know, it's like oh that can just look crappy. You yeah, company over. Like you're not gonna like, but you have to like really. Yeah, it's like having company over and having to clean the parlor. And plus, you got to carry commercial liability insurance. <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical. So that is one of the advantages. I mean, I know there's a lot of work involved. Um, Cheryl's going to tell us about preparing for a gallery show, but at least that the gallery carries the insurance when yeah. you do a gallery show. Yeah. Do you have to inco be incorporated, Rose, in order to... Well, I guess Canadian law might be different. Than no, and I, I have the wonderful advantage of being in a studio building that is a group liability, a group insurance plan that we are able to tap into because there's so many of us. Ooh, that's huge wonderful. difference. Huge, huge difference. difference. Because then they expect you to have it because they're going to have the open studios. And if you're going to participate, mm -hmm. you need to have the insurance. Yeah. Mm. It's a commercial uh, space. Mm -hmm. It's zoned commercial. So we have to have the appropriate insurance. Mm. But yes, I mean, if you're looking into joining up with a group of artists or, or joining a studio, that is one of the advantages is that you can also get the group plan when you're looking at insurance. Huge, okay. huge advantage. Definitely <laughs> information to take to the bank literally people <laughs> it's like really you you don't learn that in college let me tell you or no taking, not in art taking, school either taking, no. yeah taking classes later no no one's no gonna one tell you that. ever covered insurance liability nope. what it means when someone comes in your studio what yeah. it means when you're transporting your art from one place to another when mm. you're using someone to ship it when you're doing it yourself or what happened to a bunch of artists here in vancouver several years ago they were in a prestigious granville street art gallery that overnight disappeared and took all of their art with them mm. oh prestigious wow. prestigious yeah, yeah they Pre were they were prestigious taters. That's Until about then. Fun. Yep. What's that word? Prestigious magicians. <laughs> they were magicians. Cheryl, do you do you have exclusive? Do you do you work exclusively with certain galleries, and you know how they're going to cover your work, and they have a track record? No, I haven't run away to another state or something. I would I would love to do that, but I haven't um, as yet got there. So I tend to hire gallery spaces. 
I've had um, previously I've had an exhibition in a gallery um, that was in the middle of the, the 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 COVID epidemic, which was really difficult. Yeah, um, working with other gallery. Yeah, working with galleries, and I think that when you actually do work with galleries, it's perhaps my experience there it wasn't as difficult because they did most of the um the hanging mm. however um you are still up for well, this particular one and other ones you're still up for the cost of alcohol and um um social media and promotion also um however your public liability isn't there because they obviously take that but usually you will have to have pieces which are of a reasonable amount because they take about 50 percent Ooh. So the actual pricing of your work will have to be such that the gallery would only like to sell one or two of them and make back their and make their profit on it. Hmm. If that sort of helps. I have previously just um, hired out a space at the local regional gallery, and I'm pretty sure that that's probably geographical. I'm here in Australia, and I'm pretty sure that everybody's local area, you would have something um different to to have so i hire out this particular space and i can do whatever i like within that space and um so i mean the, the shipping of the paintings to the space is, is that i've actually have my paintings of a size that i can fit in my car ah a method yeah. to your madness but yeah. i thought some of your pieces are really quite large aren't they those, those fit into your car too yeah three by four fits in yep yeah, and I also do two by three. So I do three by four and you can fit two two by threes on the top of it, as well as when you hang them, you have that beautiful uniformity. Plus when you price them, that painting, the large ones of this, this size are that. So it makes it very easy for me that I don't have to keep on working out various things. So you can end up with a template. So perhaps then you need to decide if you're going to have an open night. And then you're going to need some helpers because you're going to need some people to um, serve food. Um, you're going to need some people to actually take a, around some wine and uh, to make sure that the music is okay and to greet people because you, the artist, you need to be available to mm. talk to everybody. Plus, you might like to have some really nice giveaways on the night and they can be some free lessons. You can also use that night or the time that you're there to promote for the future. So not only are you actually showing your art, but you can actually show what other events that you have available. And I think that you have to think of this as an event. And it was like Rose's, um, Rose's art trail. You have to think of it as an event. And so that is food, it's greeting people. It's having, um, I sort of have like a fun thing which I got from the concept of Willy Wonka. So I would have a Hold few gold Iyer. tickets. Iyer. Iyer. Oh, hold it up. Iyer. Oh, oh, nice. Iyer. Oh, beautiful. Oh, lovely. Those are nice. So, and, and I really should have done them all gold, shouldn't I? Yeah. But I didn't really think of it, but I was, I was you know, the concept of the gold ticket, yeah, like the prize or something like that. As well as I often have some hand-drawn postcards. I have a lot of postcards. And so when people are interested in a particular painting, I've got, well, here, have a look at that, and it's got all my information on the back of it. So it's important to see this as a marketing and how to promote yourself as you go forward. But I think that the biggest amount of work happens is when you're actually doing the work. And so sometimes I think that it's best if you actually get together some sort of an idea or some sort of a theme. Yeah. And so once you've got about, I don't know, maybe 10, 20, 30 paintings, and you can also try to have different sizes because not everybody has space for a three foot by four foot painting. Sometimes people would like something sort of smaller, but that's where the work actually does begin and um i have a show coming up in march and i know the sizes of the room and so i and, and this is up in newcastle above me so i like to go into that space and i like to actually pick the space where you walk into and you look right down there and i think ah, i need something really good to be down here hmm. and so you can actually have a look at the space and sometimes you can design your paintings for it i mean that's a thought yeah yeah to make people feel really comfortable 
but the lead in for a show is really is 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 really is really massive and especially the load of the work and the ideas that you're going to put into it yeah. and then I suppose to back it up when you're finished the show <laughs> all the work that will go into the following up and thanking people for coming and just retouching mm. base with so many mm. people and asking if they would like to take a painting home to see or if they have sort of other thoughts yeah the follow-up is also really important and going all the way through that is your social media and it's almost like just post 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 and do your best to um do your best to um involve people and be on your be on your game yeah i've learned so, your world i've learned so much from this okay, discussion stay today there. um <laughs> You know, we, we, we're going to have to keep going um, because there's so much more to talk about. We're going to have to split this into two, two shows, two episodes. For so sure. um, let's, let's, let's get back together really soon and continue our discussion because um, I have more questions too. And then I want to hear about Denise's, uh, <laughs> has, all, has recently gone through all this. Plus she's got new work in the background. I want to find out. About. Yeah. Great. Thank you guys. It's been so wonderful spending time with you. I love you so much. Okay, Bye. see you next time. Bye-bye.